Today, Commander, we're going to rank every single Battletech Heavy Mech and its most notable variant on a tier list from S to F, S being the best, F being the worst. If you watch to the end, you'll learn which mechs are the top performers for our mercenary company and also how to use each mech as a member of an effective team. For this in-depth analysis, we used an evaluation matrix and measured each mech based on 27 different factors split into six major categories. Offense, defense, utility, logistics, cost, and availability. And to make sure this list is useful to you as a commander no matter where in the inner sphere your contracts take you, we're leaving the availability out until the end so we can just get a rating of the mech's performance. That'll tell us which mech should form the core of your mercenary company while still keeping you aware of regional opportunities. With that being said, commander, let's kick off our tier list with the first category the battle line mechs. Battle line mechs form the front line that the rest of the team fights around. Their job is to take and receive damage, shielding more lightly armored mechs from harm. Let's start out with a nice average performer so we can form a good baseline, and that's the universally available Thunderbolt 5S. While it doesn't have the most damage, it's a mech with high armor and can fight reasonably well at every range bracket. By dumping its ammo, it can also raise its defense to levels that rival some assault mechs. Its flexibility makes it very useful, and it scores a 5.6 or a B on our tier list. The most notable variant is the Thunderbolt 5SE. It shifts the mech to a hybrid role that can fight as both a battle line mech or a cavalry mech. It's a bit worse than the original because it no longer does meaningful damage at long range and can't fight infantry. It's usable, but flawed, and rates out to a C plus on our tier list. Not to worry, Commander. We'll be taking a look at much better cavalry and hybrid options for our mercenary company a bit later in the video. But first, let's continue on with the battle line mechs by looking at the Orion. Its loadout is similar to the Thunderbolts, but with better piercing and critical hit in exchange for a worse defense. The main reason for taking the Orion over the Thunderbolt, however, is for the Orion's anti-aircraft quirk. Instead of having to use a mech base slot on a fragile anti-aircraft mech like a Rifleman or Jaeger mech, a mercenary unit can use the Orion to cover the anti-aircraft row well enough. For this rare and very useful quirk, the Orion scores a 6.0 or an A- on our tier list. The best variant, the Orion V, adds a second SRM-4 by dropping its armor. This is a bit risky for a frontliner, but a decent choice if the unit needs additional critical hit. The Orion V scores a B-plus on our tier list. Now that we have a good baseline going, Commander, let's look at why the Compelling Confederation's new mech, the Cataprac, misses the mark. The Cataprac has very good offense with two piercing weapons, but has clear defensive issues. The mech has only 16 points of armor in the torsos and packs both main weapons on the right side. This makes the Cataprac a bit of a bully mech rather than a solid defender. It'll perform well as long as the fights are easy, but if it takes a few unlucky shots or gets itself into an extended brawl, the mech may fall apart early. The Prototype 1X is usable, but flawed. It rates to a 5.0 or a C plus on our tier list. Its variant, the 2X, I would not recommend under any circumstances. It has a 75% chance of ammunition explosion on the left torso, which is unacceptable for a mech expected to trade blows on the front line. It scores an F on our tier list. I suppose the Capellans can be forgiven for such shoddy construction, Commander. The Cataprac was made out of whatever parts their failing infrastructure could locally produce, after all. Nothing like our next mech, the rare and exquisitely designed Black Knight. It's an all-energy build that makes it impossible to be destroyed by an ammunition explosion. And because it spreads its weapons across multiple locations, the Black Knight will remain a threat until completely destroyed. This makes it very reliable as a frontliner. Its armor is a bit low for a brawler, which means it'll draw frequent repair costs, but it's a decent command mech for those that like to fight on the front lines. The Succession War era Black Knight scores a 5.8 and rates to a B plus on our tier list. The Free Worlds League Black Knight 7L variant is even better. The mech trades its PPC for a large laser and two heat sinks. This lets it sustain three piercing attacks a turn the highest out of any heavy mech in the Secession War era. For this unique ability, the KNTL rates to a 6.3 or an A on the tier list. Rounding out the battle line group is the Lyran Commonwealth's Flashman. It's a reliable energy build with solid combat performance. It's only penalized for its rather high cost. It rates to a 5.6 or a B on the tier list. Now that we've covered the battle line mechs who fight on the front lines, let's take a look at the group of mechs that fight behind them by moving on to the range group. These are mechs meant to sit behind the battle line and do damage from afar or provide some kind of utility benefit to the unit. Let's look at some poorly designed range mechs first, before taking a look at the better ones. First off, the Rifleman. Originally designed as a fire support mech during the Star League, the Rifleman's loadout is outdated. The AC-5s don't do enough damage to be impactful, and the mech's low armor makes it risky to move into effective range with its large lasers. On the modern battlefield, the Rifleman is really more of a utility mech, best attached to command lances at the company level or higher. There, the Rifleman's anti-aircraft targeting and advanced communication system can help a commander defend against aircraft and coordinate his units. The Rifleman scores a 4.3 and rates to a C on our tier list. 
The original two-end variant with PPCs reduces the number of anti-aircraft weapons and has significant heat limitations. It rates to an F. Next up is the Jaegerman, used by the Federated Sons. It's an anti-aircraft specialist with paper-thin armor. Because of the limited role on a dropship, we're usually better off taking multiple generalist mechs over specialists. This allows us to have the highest number of useful mechs for any given situation. Because it performs so poorly at anything else other than shooting down aircraft, the Jaeger mech scores a 3.0 on our scale and rates to an F. The Jaeger mech A variant with LRM-15s has better damage, but has limited ammunition and the same defense issues. It also rates to an F. Next is the highly desired Marauder. While this rare mech is often used as a status symbol by mech warriors, in the final analysis, the Marauder is in reality a bit average. Too few heat sinks limit its ability to output high damage, and it's a bit risky to use long term because of the 100% ammunition explosion risk on the left torso. When taking in cost as an additional factor and reconsidering long term risk to the pilot, we have to regrade the Marauder a B. The original variant isn't a bad mech, but there are cheaper alternatives out there. The Davian Marauder 3D, which removes the ammunition explosion risk, makes it more consistent overall. It rates to a B. Not to worry, Commander. I know you said you were looking for a mech you can use as your personal command vehicle, and after looking at all the heavy mechs available, I think the best one is next on our list, the Archer. It has good armor and defense against critical hits for a range mech, and has a strong, easy to understand offense. While it doesn't have the legendary history of the Marauder, the common everyday Archer has consistent and solid fundamentals. It scores an A on the tier list. Opposite to this is the Bombardier, a mech inferior to the Archer in nearly every way. The mech has poor endurance, carrying only enough ammunition for 6 salvos compared to the Archer's 12. That means the mech will often run out of ammunition mid-fight and have non-impactful damage from then on. The Bombardier rates to an F. Now that we've covered the mechs that fight on the front line and the mechs who fight from afar, I think it's a good time to introduce our first hybrid mech category commander, the Range Battleline Hybrids. Most of these mechs have high offense but lower defense. They usually start fighting in the range role before moving forward to the battle line later in the fight. Major benefits to having this type of mech is that they aren't as reliant on protection as a range mech, but can still do damage from afar. Their numerous weapons can also fill in anything their lance might be missing. We can see an example of a range battle line hybrid by looking at the Lyran Commonwealth's Archer 2S. It starts the fight with its LRM-15s in the range roll, and then swaps over to the battle line roll with its SRMs and medium lasers once ranges close. Individual performance of the Archer 2S is lower because of the additional ammunition it has to carry, but it scores higher on the utility side because of its additional critical hit weapons. It rates to a 5.5 or a B. Equipped similarly to the Steiner Archer is the Crusader 3R. It fights nearly identically to the Archer, but with a bit more offense at the cost of defense. The SRM ammunition in the center torso risks a through armor critical hit that can instantly destroy the mech. The Crusader is usable, but flawed. It must fight very cautiously in order to be successful. The mech scores a 4.8, or a C plus on our tier list. The Liao 3L variant shifts the Crusader to a ranged cavalry hybrid by adding jump jets. It drops its offensive power a bit too low in order to do so though. The Liao 3L scores a 4.4 or a C. The heaviest hitter on this list is the Warhammer. Originally designed as a shock troop during the Star League, this mech has tremendous firepower but low armor. The Warhammer has particularly low leg armor, which means it should always be behind some kind of partial cover to negate leg hits. Because its glass cannon design often makes it a priority target for the enemy, I recommend only taking the Warhammer when the unit has 6 or more mechs so its allies can defend it better. The Warhammer rates to a respectable 5.3 or a B on the tier list. The Davian 6D on the other hand is a fantastic example of less is more. Removing the SRM and machine guns lets the 6D increase its defense to assault mech levels and helps it manage its heat better. It's effectively a smaller awesome with better brawl capability and more maneuverability. The Warhammer 6D scores a 7.2 and rates to an S. With that out of the way, Commander, we now have a good overview of how the more static mechs rate against each other. Now let's move on to the category of mechs that are aggressive playmakers, the cavalry mechs. Their job is to disrupt the battle line and range mechs using their speed to flank into vulnerable rears or sides. There aren't very many mechs in this category, since most of the pure cavalry mechs are in the medium class, but let's take a quick look so that we can understand the arguably more useful hybrid mechs that blend the cavalry and battle line roles, or the ranged and cavalry roles. First up, the Free World's League Exterminator. The original Star League variant was equipped with advanced cloaking technology that enabled it to perform assassinations, but these days, the downgraded Succession Wars era Exterminator is just a cavalry mech. It has solid armor, excellent maneuverability, and decent striking power. 
its numerous weapons and tonnage also make it a big threat to light mechs. One kick from the exterminator will often threaten to tear a light mech's leg completely off in a single shot. This mech performs on the battlefield, but is expensive and difficult to maintain. There are better options available. The exterminator rates to a 4.6 or a C, the champion. Now here's a mech that suffered more than most since the fall of the Star League. While damage is good, the downgrades from advanced ferrofibrous armor to standard armor have crippled it. 13 armor on the legs is unacceptable for a heavy mech that's expected to get in close. I expect this mech to be extinct in the next few centuries. It rates to an F. The Quick Draw 4G. It has excellent speed at 585, but low armor and terrible weapons placement that makes it hit lighter than a number of medium mechs. When comparing it to better cavalry options like the Wolverine 6M and Griffin 1S from the medium class, it's clear that the Quick Draw is a waste of money. F. The Quick Draw 5A variant improves damage output, but its low armor is still a concern. It's barely passable and rates to a C-. Okay, now that we understand what the cavalry mechs do, we can better understand the benefit of the cavalry battle line hybrids. Cavalry battle line hybrids normally want to get into rear and sides like cavalry mechs, but they also have a high defense, which means a commander can also bring them in to reinforce the battle line. A major benefit to this hybrid is that they're less needy compared to a pure cavalry mech during the initiative phase. Commanders can activate a cavalry battle line hybrid early and let it trade, knowing that the mech's high armor will keep it safe. A lightly armored cavalry mech, on the other hand, will be more greedy, wanting the team's later turns to get into position. The first of these useful hybrids is the Ossol. It's an energy mech whose large lasers give it respectable piercing and its medium lasers give it efficient follow-up. Its weakness is that it's vulnerable to flanks. Its rear side torsos can be crit by a single shot of a medium laser, and it will also draw a higher than average repair cost because of its low armored arms. That being said though, the mech will still perform with a bit of looking after. The Ossol rates to a 5.3 or a B. Its variant, the 4F, is a ranged cavalry hybrid. It suffers from consistency issues because it just carries two PPCs and doesn't have enough heat sinks to maintain a constant barrage. The variant rates to a C+. The second mech is the Osrock also produced by Osman Industries. It has the same rear and arm issues as the Os Sol, but is a better offense because of the addition of an SRM-4. Ammunition is stored in the center torso, but the mech's narrow low profile will reduce the chance of a through armor critical hit. The Osrock rates a bit higher to a 5.9 or a B plus on our tier list. The Osrock 2M variant is a cavalry mech armed with just two large lasers. This makes it suffer from consistency issues. It rates to a 4.4 or a C. A mech with none of these issues, however, is the Grasshopper. It's a mech with near-perfect armor allocation and weapons placement. Its heat sinks allow it to bring a tremendous amount of damage once it closes to brawl range. The Grasshopper is a mobile threat that can take a tremendous amount of punishment before it goes down. For these qualities, it scores a 7.4 or an S. Harder to find, but surprisingly even better, is the Guillotine. It's nearly identical to the Grasshopper, but with slightly worse weapons placement in exchange for a much better offense. The SRM-6 gives it tremendous critical hit potential instead of the Grasshopper's LRM-5, which is only really useful against vehicles. If we ever see a Guillotine on the market, we should be sure to snap it up if we can afford it. The Guillotine scores even higher than the Grasshopper at a 7.7 .7 or an S. Its variant, the 4P, sacrifices armor for a PPC, which makes it a pure cavalry mech. It's a bit less flexible, but useful nonetheless. It rates to a 5.8 or a B+. This brings us to the mechs who are arguably the most useful to a mercenary company, the range and cavalry hybrids. Heavy mechs in this category are useful in nearly any situation. They can join a unit of cavalry mechs, providing fire support during the attack, but can also join a unit of range mechs, fighting alongside them and using their speed and armor to intercept attackers. In larger formations, they're good as a commander's quick reaction force, or as a rear guard if things go badly. First on this list is Mountain Wolf Battle Mech's new mech, the Merlin. I hear nothing but good things about this mech, and quick sales have reportedly saved the entire company from bankruptcy. The mech was made specifically for mercenaries like us, and is armed similarly to the Capellan Confederation's Vindicator, with better defense and anti-infantry capability. If we're looking for an all-rounder mech that's affordable, easy to maintain, and don't want to pay the ridiculous markup for a Vindicator, we should consider placing an order with Mountain Wolf Battle Mech soon. The mech rates to a B on our tier list. Next up, the hot take that got me exiled from the Draconis Combine, the Dragon. It's a mech with bad offense and an even worse defense. Its AC5 and LRM10 give it a combat performance barely over the well-known useless mech, the Shadowhawk. Low damage means it has to often charge into melee rather than act as the fire support platform it was intended to be. On top of this, the mech has inadequate armor on the side torsos and horrendous structural design. 
even with ammunition dumping, it has a 50% chance to explode on the left torso, and a 100% chance to explode on the right torso if it suffers a critical hit. The ugly truth is that the original Dragon 1N is a downright failure of a mech. It rates to a 2.7 or an F. All isn't lost though. I'm happy to report the new prototype Dragon 1G is a dramatic improvement above the original. The swap from the AC5 to a PPC improves both damage and defense so the Dragon can perform its job properly. The Dragon 1G, now being called the Grand Dragon, rates to a 5.2 or a B-. Next up is the rare and often misused catapult. Its double LRM-15s, backed by four medium lasers, means that the jump-capable catapult is best used with finesse. Clever pilots will choose the range the victim is weakest and force them to make bad trades. The mech's medium lasers make up for its limited ammunition, letting it continue to fight even after its ammo runs out. The catapult is an extremely valuable mech that can take on nearly any situation it's put into. It rates to a 6.7 or an A on our tier list. The Draconis Combine K2 variant with two PPCs but no jump jets is a decent range mech and helps the Combine make up for its lack of Warhammer. It rates to a B. Before we determine the best heavy mechs to use in a mercenary company commander, I'd like to mention two unusual mechs that don't fit into the normal categories. The first is the downgraded Stalker 4P. It's a linebreaker mech, designed to overpower the enemy battle line by having more firepower and armor in exchange for being slower. Although it's 75 tons, which technically makes it a heavy mech, we'll be holding off rating it until the assault mech tier list so we can better compare it to its linebreaker peers. The other unusual mech is the Lancelot. The original Star League Lancelot 01 was a deadly cavalry mech. It had the speed of a commando and a penetration similar to the Black Knight L. Secession War era downgrades have resulted in a tragic downfall. The modern Lancelot 02 now limps along at the same speed as a battle line or range mech. It's now forced into the bodyguard role, similar to the Centurion. For this reason, we'll be grading the Lancelot in our medium tier list so we can fairly compare it to its peers. With that being said, Commander, here are how all the heavy mechs of 3025 rate against each other. But what happens to this list when we take the realities of the resource scrap secession wars into account? Which of these mechs should we choose to form the core of our mercenary companies? To answer that question, we need to consider availability. Shown here are the weighted scores of each mech as well as their availability to our mercenary company. There may be different opportunities depending on regional salvage available, but this is what we should generally expect. My research suggests the Thunderbolt and Orion are sensible picks when building out the front line of our mercenary company, with the Black Knight L variant and Flashman being lucky pickups if we can find them. For range mechs, we should rely on the original Archer 2R, and if our company needs additional critical hit weapons, the boys and I can convert a few of them into the Archer 2S. Our range piercing mechs should be the hybrid Warhammer 6D or the Warhammer 6R if you don't want to perform refits. If we're lucky enough to find any Marauders, we should convert them into the more consistent Davion 3D. And while it isn't ideal, if we find ourselves needing more anti-aircraft mechs, the Rifleman 3N is our best bet. For pure cavalry mechs, I feel we should pass on the heavies available. There are better ones in the medium class. I feel it's a better strategy to spend the cash on Grasshoppers and Osrocks, who can be used in both the battle line and cavalry roles with guillotines being instant buys if we can find them. We can also consider buying a few Merlins or Grand Dragons if we want an all-rounder workhorse mech, and should keep our eyes peeled for any opportunity to pick up the incredibly useful Catapult C1. If you'd like to learn how to pilot some of the mechs we've covered to their maximum potential, and see improved builds for them, please see the commander guides on this channel. Yeah, we ran out of patience.